Hello and happy Easter to you. A very warm welcome to this uh, online service for Paul Mission Area as we celebrate the birth of Christ. Jesus Christ is risen today. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We say together, Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pause for a moment to look back on our lives and prepare to make our confession. We say together, Heavenly Father, we have sinned in thought, word and deed and have failed to do what we ought to have done. We are sorry and truly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past and lead us in his way to walk as children of light. Amen. Your sins are forgiven. Go in peace. Come and follow me. Blessed are you, Sovereign God, Creator of all. To you be glory and praise for ever. You founded the earth in the beginning, and the heavens are the work of your hands. In the fullness of time you made us in your image. And in these last days you have spoken to us, in your Son, Jesus Christ, the Word made flesh. As we rejoice in the gift of your presence among us, let the light of your love always shine in our hearts. Your spirit ever renew our lives, and your praises ever be on our lips. Blessed be God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God for ever. This reading is taken from Isaiah, chapter 25, verses 6 to 9. Here on Mount Zion, the Lord Almighty will prepare a banquet for all the nations of the world, a banquet of the richest foods and the finest wine. Here he will suddenly remove the cloud of sorrow that has been hanging over all the nations. The sovereign Lord will destroy death forever. He will wipe away the tears from everyone's eyes and take away the disgrace his people have suffered throughout the world. The Lord himself has spoken. When it happens, everyone will say, He is our God. We have put our trust in him and he has rescued us. He is the Lord. We have put our trust in him and now we are happy and joyful because he has saved us. The Gospel Canticle Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty saviour, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets, God promised of old to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us. To show mercy to our ancestors and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath God swore to our father Abraham to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. And you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of all their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us, to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. John, chapter 20, verses 1 to 18. 
Early on Sunday morning, while it was still dark, Mary Madeline went to the tomb and saw that the stone had been taken away from the entrance. She went running to Simon, Peter and John and told them, They have taken the Lord from the tomb and we don't know where they have put him. Then Peter and John went to the tomb. The two of them were running, but John ran faster than Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent over and saw the linen cloths, but he did not go in. Behind him came Simon Peter, and he went straight into the tomb. He saw the linen cloth lying there, and the cloth which had been around Jesus' head. It was not lying with the linen cloths, but was rolled up by itself. Then John, who had reached the tomb first, also went in. He saw and believed. Then the disciples went back home. Mary stood crying outside the tomb. While she was still crying, she bent over and looked in the tomb and saw two angels there, dressed in white, sitting where the body of Jesus had been, one at the head and the other at the feet. Woman, why are you crying? they asked her. She answered, They have taken my Lord away, and I do not know where they have put him. Then she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not know that it was Jesus. Woman, why are you crying? Jesus asked her. Who is it that you're looking for? She thought he was the gardener, so she said to him, If you took him away, sir, tell me where you have put him, and I will go and get him. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned towards him and said in Hebrew, Rabbani, which means teacher. Do not hold on to me, Jesus told her, because I have not yet gone back up to the Father. But go to my brothers and tell them that I am returning to him who is my father and their father, my God and their God. So Mary Madeline went and told the disciples that she had seen the Lord and related to them what he had told her. It's fair to say that for many people it's been a long winter. Although the weather hasn't been too bad this year, Lockdown seems to have gone on forever. People have been separated from the ones they love. Parents from their children, grandparents from their grandchildren, friends from their friends. For lots of people it's been really hard not being able to do the things that they would normally do. Having to take extra precautions all the time to keep themselves safe, especially if they were shielding. For all of us, it's been difficult. For those who've lost loved ones during this time, it's been especially hard. The disciples who we heard about in the Gospel story just now have been through a torrid time themselves. They had encountered Jesus somewhere along the road. They'd heard him preach and been astounded by the authority with which he spoke about God, as one who really knew God, who really understood how God felt about his people. He taught them that God loved them. He taught them that God wanted good things for them, wanted to be with them and guide them and lead them through life, lead them to all that was best for them, to life in all its fullness, as he'd put it. And they trusted him, they believed him, they'd followed him. They'd gone along with him and believed that he really was the Christ, the one that they were expecting who would come from God and lead the world to a better understanding a better place, a better way of living. And yet suddenly all this had been taken away from them. This man who they trusted completely was arrested and then cruelly executed before their very eyes, nailed to a cross. They saw him die. They saw his body being taken from the cross and laid in a tomb. Everything they'd expected and hoped for, everything they believed in, had all been gone, taken, all t- been taken from them all in one go, and they were understandably devastated. And it's with that sense of great devastation and loss hanging over them that some of the women had gone to the tomb on that first Easter morning to anoint Jesus' body, to do as was a custom in their time, in their culture, to anoint the body of one who had died. But we're told that when they got to the tomb, The stone had been rolled away that blocked the entrance of the tomb. And instead of going in to look, as we might imagine they might have done, they were terrified and they immediately assumed that somebody had stolen his body. They ran off to tell the other disciples what had happened. 
And Peter and John, two of the disciples, rushed straight away in response to this news to the tomb to see for themselves what had happened. John got there first, but was reluctant to go in. He stopped and peeped down through the, through the entrance into the tomb. But he waited outside. Peter, as ever, impulsive, went straight on in. John followed him. They looked around. They saw a strange thing. They saw the grave clothes that had been wrapped round Jesus' body, piled up, laid up neatly in a pile on the corner. Now why would someone do that if they were stealing a body? Surely they'd take away the body in the grave clothes. But no, they've left them behind and not just stripped them off and chucked them on the floor. They're folded neatly in their place. And at that moment, John, for the first time, believed. He believed what Jesus had told them before. They'd all been told that he would be crucified. They'd all been told that three days later he would rise from the dead. But it seemed too incredible a thing for them to be able to process and grasp for themselves. So they'd lost that sense of expectation about that. They just assumed he really was dead and gone. And yet at that moment, John realised. After John and Peter had gone off to tell the other disciples, Mary, one of Jesus' closest friends, had stayed on the to beside the tomb, still bewildered by what had happened, still at a loss, still overwhelmed with sadness, and she sat outside the tomb weeping. And through the mist of her tears, she saw a, a shape emerge as somebody drew close to her. And guessing it must be the gardener or someone like that, she said to him, what have you done with his body? Where have you taken him? And Jesus called her by name, Mary, he said. And it was in that moment that Mary recognised him and realised the truth that Jesus really had risen from the dead. Here he was, standing in front of her. And Jesus sent her off to tell the other disciples what had happened. That news, that realisation had a hugely transformative effect all that sadness and grief and emptiness and loss that they'd felt in that space of time beforehand suddenly disappeared completely. Suddenly they remembered the things that Jesus had told them about what would happen to him. Suddenly they believed. And everything that Jesus had promised in the past came back as sure a promise as could be. It was a transformative experience for all of their lives. And this is the good news for us that we celebrate at Easter. That event, although we didn't witness it in the way that they did, has the same power to transform our lives and our, our lives and our beliefs. For those who are grieving at this time, for loved ones lost either over the last few months or many years ago, there is the hope through the death of Jesus and the resurrection of Jesus that there is life beyond death. Before we could believe it, but we couldn't be certain. But because Jesus has risen from the dead, we know it can be true. And so the whole of the, the well, although it's still terribly sad to be grieving for those that we've lost, that experience is transformed by the presence of hope. Hope that one day we will be with them again. And everything else that Jesus promised is there for us too. The promise that a time would come where wars would end and peace would reign. A promise that a time would come where injustice would be done away with and the world will be a place where people are treated fairly and all can live and love together. All that Jesus promised is there for us still because he rose from the dead. He demonstrated, proved for his disciples that that was possible. And we know from him now that everything he has promised is possible. And this is what transforms our lives. This is what we celebrate at Easter Day. The wonderful news that death is not the end. The wonderful news that there is to be a better place where all the injustice and unfairness of this world will come to an end and we can live and care for one another as we should do. For those who put their trust in Jesus and follow him, we're called to live out our lives today by the same standards that he lived then. We're called to show that love now for people here in this life that we will ultimately come to know all together in, in God's eternal kingdom. It's a challenge. 
but the events that we celebrate give us hope that it's an achievable challenge. It's something that God has promised and God will deliver. Jesus Christ is risen today. Hallelujah indeed. We say the creed together. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven and was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary and was made known. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, we look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, on this Easter day, as we celebrate life beyond death, we pray for those who struggle in our world today. We pray that you might give to those who grieve the hope of being reunited with their loved ones. We pray that you will give to those who are persecuted the hope of justice in this world as well as in your eternal kingdom. We pray that you will give the hungry and all who experience poverty the hope of fairness here today. We pray that you will give all who are anxious or living in fear because of war and violence the hope of the peace that you promise. We pray that you will give the lonely, the unloved, the uncared for a sense of your great love for them. May all who live in darkness and difficulty experience the joy that comes through the resurrection of Jesus Christ, the joy of hope, the joy of life, the joy of love. May they come to know all that you long for them, all that you promise them. May they be surrounded with a sense of your presence and your peace. We pray for your people. Guide and lead us, Lord, that we might respond to your teachings, understanding what you have asked for of us and seeking to live it out at all times and in all places. Help us to care for those in need around us and to bring joy, hope, love and healing to them as you have brought those things to us. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. We say together the words that Jesus taught us. Our oh, Father, who art, art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give, give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen.